when a young businessman, Floyd Collins, attempted to uncover a hidden cave chamber to attract tourists and profit from it, he didn't know he would become trapped under a falling rock, ultimately succumbing to freezing and starvation. This is the true tragedy of Floyd Collins at the Sand Cave. In 1924, Floyd Collins made a significant discovery that would change his life forever. He had spent many years searching for a project that could fulfill his ambition of entering the tourism business. He was in pursuit of a cave that would make him famous. When he found one in December, it marked a turning point in his life. Immediately after his discovery, Floyd struck a deal with the property owner to receive 50% of all future tourist revenues from the cave. He was thrilled with his find, especially since it was only 100 yards from the highway, which he believed would attract a large number of tourists. However, the cave lacked a real entrance, leading most tourists to avoid the spot. Determined to change this, Floyd spent the following weeks laboring for hours each day to dig an entrance for visitors. He was dedicated to widening the passageways and removing several loose rocks. On July 30, 1925, Floyd Collins' work was advancing smoothly. He ventured into the cave once more, hopeful of reaching the main chamber. With a kerosene lantern in hand, he navigated through the darkness and dampness, a familiar environment to him. The lantern's light was crucial for avoiding any missteps that could cause a rock slide. Floyd had become adept at maneuvering through the tight crevices of the tunnel by crawling forward. He arrived at a juncture where most cavers would turn back. The passage ahead was merely a tiny opening nine inches tall, through which even a toddler would struggle to pass. Despite this daunting obstacle, Floyd was convinced that this passage led to the main chamber, the very spot he had been striving to access for weeks. No one had ever ventured beyond this point, but Floyd knew it was his only option if he wanted his business to begin generating income. Floyd decided to lay flat on the ground to minimize his volume as much as possible, propelling himself forward solely with the strength of his feet. He made significant progress until he encountered the walls of the passage, which were lined with sharp gypsum crystals. These crystals clung to his clothing, making his movements nearly impossible. After a period of struggle, nearly getting stuck in that narrow passage, Floyd managed to push through the other side where conditions improved. The space beyond was slightly more spacious, allowing him to move more freely. A little further ahead, Floyd encountered a ledge overlooking a narrow pit. Confident in his ability to navigate through, he remembered the days spent removing small rocks to ease passage. Despite his efforts to clean it up, the passage remained as narrow as a chimney. Starting his descent feet first, Floyd was cautious of sharp rocks along the way. Reaching the bottom of the pit filled him with excitement. He knew his next descent would lead directly to the vast cave he had longed to discover. This anticipation fueled his determination as he was on the brink of unveiling the grand discovery he had tirelessly worked towards. Without any hesitation, he secured a rope in place and used it to make the final descent of 80 feet. As the drop was very steep, he was extra cautious as he lowered himself down. When he finally reached the cavern floor, Floyd was overcome with unimaginable joy at having discovered Sand Cave. Amazed, he looked around his discovery for several minutes, swelling with pride. However, his attention was quickly drawn to the flickering light of his lantern, prompting him to waste no time and leave quickly before the light went out. Despite his excitement to share his discovery with everyone, he knew the return journey would be extremely difficult without any light. He climbed quickly to the top of the last descent, but as he maneuvered the lantern through the hole, it fell and cracked, extinguishing the light. Without losing hope in the total darkness, Floyd continued to push himself through the opening towards the surface, taking care not to dislodge any rocks that might cause the cave to collapse on him. However, it was so dark and the passage so narrow that the worst happened. As he was maneuvering his body upwards, his foot dislodged a loose rock from the ceiling. It came out of its place and fell, trapping his left leg. 
Floyd used his right leg to try to kick off the rock, but the more he tried, the more loose rocks fell, landing on his legs and around him. Now his legs and hands were buried under dust and rocks, and a rock had pushed his head to one side. This was far from a comfortable position. It was only 10 in the morning when he ended up in this predicament, approximately three hours after he had started his journey of exploration. He decided to start screaming for help, hoping that someone would hear him. However, he was far from the entrance, and there was no one nearby because it was cold and snowy outside. The clock was ticking, and nobody seemed to be near the cave. Floyd did his best to stay calm, but as the day passed, he remained stuck in his painful predicament, unable to move. All he could do was pray and hope for the best. Almost 24 hours after his accident on Saturday morning, two of the property's owners, Ed and Doyle, decided to check on him. Doyle's son, Jewel, only 17 years old at the time, accompanied them. As they approached the entrance of the cave, they noticed Floyd's coat hanging on the ledge outside. They called out his name, but received no answer. They ventured into the cave as far as they could, but at the first narrow passage, Ed and Doyle had to give up due to their size. However, Jewel, who was more slender, managed to squeeze through the hole and reach Floyd. Jewel noticed that Floyd's entire torso was pinned under heaps of gravel and rock. Floyd, excited to see Jewel, immediately asked him to fetch his brothers to help extricate him from the predicament. By noon, Floyd's brother Marshall and their father Pat arrived at the cave to find a crowd gathered at its entrance, all eager to witness Floyd's rescue. Marshall and another man entered the cave and managed to navigate through the narrow passage. They immediately began to dig and excavate as much debris as possible to widen the tunnel leading down to Floyd. They had to be very careful not to let loose rocks fall down the pit, as Floyd's head was literally at the bottom already receiving droplets of cold water falling down on his face. Many hours later, Floyd's other brother, Homer, would arrive at the cave to help with the situation. He was very upset because the day before the accident, Floyd asked Homer to go with him to the cave, but he didn't. This anger put him in a very heightened determination to get his brother out of the cave. He made it through the crowd of people, almost 100 at that time, and went down to where Marshall and the others were working. In the cave, he attempted to make his way through the tunnel that no one had been able to access. He started squeezing his way down, ignoring the pain from the cuts on him made by the roughness of the rocky tunnel. Driven by determination, his leg accidentally touched Floyd's face, causing Floyd to shudder. He was overjoyed to finally have physical contact with his brother. However, the situation was far from hopeful. It was deteriorating. The crowd outside had started many bonfires, causing the ice inside the cave to melt. This, paradoxically, made Floyd colder than before. At that moment, Floyd shared with his brother Homer his pride in having reached the cave chamber and vowed never to return once rescued. After spending some time together, Floyd urged Homer to leave him and get some rest. Homer had been with his brother for almost eight hours before he reluctantly headed back to the cave entrance. Upon exiting, Homer was furious to see the large crowd still gathered outside. He protested that if they couldn't contribute to the rescue efforts, they should vacate the area. Unfortunately, no one heeded his demand. In fact, more people arrived when reporters publicized the rescue. Homer, irritated by the interviews, urged people to see for themselves in the cave. Later that day, several attempted to reach Floyd. Some succeeded, while others did not. One man emerged, reporting Floyd's death, while another claimed the pit had caved in. Rumors spread rapidly, causing the family to fear the worst. Homer, feeling anxious, returned to the cave alone. His relief was immense when he found Floyd alive. Homer continued to clear rocks around his brother until he managed to free Floyd's hand, sparking a moment of celebration. By the fourth day, everyone was ready to free Floyd. They planned to use a rope tied around his chest for traction, attaching a harness to ensure his safety. Multiple men began pulling, but after a few minutes, Floyd cried out to stop. He feared being torn apart. His legs were so trapped that while his upper body moved, his legs remained pinned under the rocks. 
With less hope than before, Homer continued to remove as much rock as he could for the next three hours. But exhaustion and several cuts on his body made him feel sick. He was placed under a treatment to prevent infection. On the fifth day, a reporter entered the cave and installed a light bulb near Floyd for an interview. The improved visibility allowed them to see Floyd's trapped leg clearly after removing a considerable amount of dust. They attempted to lift the rock using a crowbar, blocks, and a jack, but after several attempts, they had to give up as it proved impossible to move. News of Floyd's unfortunate situation spread, attracting thousands of people to the site. False rumors circulated that nobody was trapped, turning the scene into a carnival. Hotels in the area were fully booked at high prices, and hundreds of cars lined the roads leading to the cave. The increasing number of people inside the cave caused concern as their activities weakened the walls without any reinforcements. The bonfires set up melted the ice inside the cave, further exacerbating the situation. Unbeknownst to them, the cave was becoming increasingly unstable. On Wednesday, after 123 hours, disaster struck. While everyone rested outside, the entrance to the pit collapsed blocking any further access to Floyd. Fortunately, nobody was trapped inside with him, but now reaching him was impossible. On February 5th, 1925, a team of workers began digging a shaft to reach Floyd. The cave entrance was barricaded to prevent entry, so they relied on a light bulb near Floyd's head, rigged to signal if he breathed. Despite their efforts, Floyd remained trapped without food or water as the temperature dropped and exhaustion set in. By Friday, the 13th of February, they were close to reaching him, with one worker reporting hearing sounds from within 10 feet. However, at 1.30 a.m. on Monday, February 16th, Floyd was found already deceased. It was unanimously decided that the cave would be Floyd's final resting place and the shaft was sealed with his body still inside. Months later, Homer had the cave reopened to retrieve his brother's body for a proper burial. This was the true tragedy of Floyd Collins. May his soul rest in peace.